So today's video, we're going to do an absolute masterclass on seed starting and I'm going all out with an overhead camera so you can really truly see what I am about to do. So I'm going to talk about how to sow smaller seeds along with larger seeds, the size of container you should use, how close the light needs to be, humidity domes, etc. and so forth. We're talking an uncut masterclass entirely. So you guys are going to learn a ton in today's video, but it's going to be a long one. Let's just say that. So. Before we get started, if you are into learning, which obviously you are a bunch of learned people, you're gonna to wanna to check out today's sponsor. Many of you already know what Skillshare is, and it's an online learning platform where you can learn how to garden, all the way to finances, film editing, how to write a book, different art, literally anything you could dream of is on Skillshare with an in-depth course associated. Some courses that I am currently looking for on Skillshare include flower arranging. Let's face it, I'm more of a tomboy than I am a girly girl. And so learning the art of flower arrangements is something that I definitely need a professional to teach me. One of my favorite courses I have looked at so far is Modern Flowers, Arranging a Stunning Centerpiece. It is from the founders of Putnam Flowers. The quality of this video is stunning, but the knowledge that these two supply is equally as valuable. Skillshare actually has a new feature, which is called Learning Path, and it is a grouping of sequential courses you should take based on the skill you are wanting to learn. So they actually make suggestions based on exactly what path you would like to get you to where you want to end up. The first 500 people to use the link in my description or my pinned comment will get one month free of Skillshare and you can learn a lot in a single month. Okay, so first off, we need to look at container selection. So this here is a regular seed cell that you oftentimes will see. You can tell it's a little bit deeper in size, a little bit larger. These you would typically use for something like a tomato or a pepper. It's too small for say a squash of some sort or a castor plant for example but it's also too large for something like a flower seed or thyme oregano some sort of herb now the reason why it's too large is because this cell will hold too much water and that actually will cause your seeds to ultimately get dampening off which is simply where the plant comes out of the ground and it kind of folds over right at the soil level. That's a sign that your seed cell is too large. What I actually like to use for these smaller size seeds instead is a seed cell that is about the size of my thumbnail and is about the depth of my thumb to the first knuckle. That is it, that is all. This here is considered a nursery pot and a nursery pot is something that you would bump up into, not necessarily plant directly into, unless of course you were doing a larger plant, for example, such as a castor bean plant, maybe a pumpkin, something with a larger size seed. This still, in some cases, may be too big for that. And if you're noticing dampening off, if you're experiencing that, you need to size down in the container. The opposite is true. If you are experiencing a lot of wilting and plants that seem to grow but then suddenly die, but they're not necessarily flopping over, the leaves are just becoming very dry, you very likely are using a seed cell that is too small. And what you wanna do is get a potting soil. Now, the brand really doesn't matter. This is what I have, and so I'm going to use it. Some people get pretty particular about what brands they should be using or not be using. But ultimately speaking, what we're looking for is a seed starting mix, something that is relatively inert. We don't wanna use a potting soil because the fibers are too coarse and the pumice or the perlite is too large. So to counter that, we wanna go for a seed starting mix. Now I will say, this seed starting mix is far from my favorite because it is very chunky, which is not ideal. I will show you how chunky it is uh, and what you definitely don't want. So you see all these little sticks and twigs? Not ideal, not something we wanna look at, but here we are and this is what we're stuck with. If this is the case and you're worried about the quality of the soil, you can actually strain it or sift it to get the smaller particulates out. I would highly encourage that if you're doing a very small size seed, but in this case, a tomato, a pepper, It'll be fine. Holy moly, that was very dusty. Can you tell that this has been sitting open in a bag for a while? So in this, I'm going to put in some lettuce and as well as some jalapeno 
peppers. Now, step one is going to be filling your cells. You typically want to overfill the cells and you want your soil to be slightly moist. These, all these little debris need to come out if possible, particularly with the smaller size seeds. With these um, lettuce and pepper seeds, it's actually not that huge of a deal, so we should be okay. But ultimately speaking, this is what you want it to look like. Now you'll notice that the soil is not super wet and this is important because when soil is really wet, it is very easy to compact and you can compact it too much. So we want slightly moist soil, kind of how it comes out of the package. And then you want to actually firmly press downwards and try to compact it slightly prior to fully saturating that soil. We want to avoid soaking wet soil getting compacted whenever possible. So next up, you need to plant the seed itself. Now this is got a million different ways you can do it, but best way to do it is a small, tiny hole, uh, not much, and I'll show you how we're gonna cover these here in a little bit. It's actually not with soil in this case. So put a tiny little hole, not very deep. I wouldn't listen to the seed package so much as just using your finger type thing. So once your seed hole is made, you can go ahead and grab your seeds. When looking at the seed package, you can quickly see, for example, that this is a 98% germination rate. And this 98% means that 98% of your seeds should germinate. Therefore, you don't have to go all out with the seeds that you sow. You could probably do two per cell. If it's lower than 80%, I would do three per cell just so you can ensure that you get some growth off of these plants. So in this case, I know that these seeds are pretty good. So I'm actually just gonna do one seed per hole. and you're just gonna pop them in there. You can kind of see them sitting all nice and pretty. Next up, I'm gonna do lettuce. So these here are actually a pelleted seed. And what that means is that they're simply coated in a clay, it's totally organic. Along with the actual coating itself, the pink is a totally organic food dye, and so it's completely harmless. The reason for this is because lettuce seeds are incredibly small, and so this pelletized version helps with that, as well as it helps us visually be able to see where the seeds land. So pepper seeds are sticking out quite obvious because they're bright yellow in color, but lettuce seeds are kind of the same, same color as the soil. So this hot pink allows us to determine if the seeds are even in the hole and how many are there. One thing I will say about pelletized seeds though is that they can and will expire quickly. So you need to use them the same year you purchase them because they will not germinate the next year or they will have very poor rates of germination. So in this case, I'm gonna do two per cell and you can see how nicely those actually pop up on the surface of the soil. Okay, so next trick is actually to use something called vermiculite. So vermiculite is a product that is not all, it's used usually as a soil amendment. However, I love to use it in a seed starting setup. The reason for that is because I find that it reduces the amount of mold on the soil surface. And in particular, it helps with ensuring that you didn't put your seeds too deep while still supplying it the much needed ambient humidity it needs to germinate. So rather than folding the soil over top of my plants, all I'm gonna do is sprinkle a layer of vermiculite over top. Now there's no right or wrong way of doing this because the more the merrier when it comes to vermiculite. I'm gonna pop that on and then give it a nice firm push. And this will get wet on its own once you put the humidity dome on and you can miss this if you like. I would never water from the top particularly when the seeds are freshly placed because it may displace the seeds and cause them to run over the edges. I would just miss this very light watering, uh, absolute mix. And then this is done, you're ready to go. 
So next up, you have your humidity dome. So your dome, this one actually has a grow light that goes on top of it. It's from Amazon. This stuff, I, I got them last year and they're actually pretty good. Like they're harder plastic. I really do enjoy these quite thoroughly. So all you wanna do is pop the humidity dome on top. Now, the key with this is that you're gonna leave it on until everything germinates. The moment everything is germinated, you want to remove it because we don't want the ambient humidity to stay too high and cause like a bacterial or fungal problem on the leaves of the seedling itself. So we're gonna leave this on until everyone germinates. Now, an option you could consider is a heat mat. Now the heat mat in and of itself will be kind of one size fits all. You would pop the heat mat underneath and you would have it on a continual heat. You don't want it hooked up to the same time where your lights are on. You want that heat to be constant all the time. However, once everything germinates, you want to remove the plant from the heat. In the case of peppers, it's a good uh, addition to add. In the case of lettuce, it actually may cause your seeds to be more leggy. So when in doubt, I probably wouldn't apply the heat mat, unless of course you know for a fact that these plants do best on a heat mat, and then I would utilize them. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill the cells with the vermiculite, and then you're just going to sprinkle the seeds on the surface, that is it. You're not gonna water it in. You wanna mist it at most. Put your dome on top and you don't wanna cover it, nothing. You literally just let the seeds fall in between the vermiculite as they lay and then you're done with that guy. Now when it comes to the physical grow lights themselves, what you wanna do in this case is put them as close as possible to the top of the dome. So long as the dome doesn't melt, I like to place it pretty much right against it. If your light's got a little bit of heat, you wanna back it off obviously so you don't damage the dome or cause a fire, uh, that's not good. But you want to keep it as close as possible so that when they pop out, they stay nice and compact. The plant will tell you very quickly if it has an issue with the intensity of the light you've given it. And if you wanna learn more on how to actually look at what that is, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video right here because that's gonna go through kind of the ins and outs of what lights you need, what height they should be at, and some signs and symptoms that the plants give you if they are exposed to too much light or not enough. So when inside of this container, you ideally don't want to continue to water from the bottom or from the top. You just wanna mist it every once in a while until everyone's germinated. So long as this feels moist to the touch, you're good to go. If you've got condensation inside of the hood, you should be good as well. If that's not there, again, just a quick mist and you're off to the races. You don't want to use fertilizer, nothing like that. Not until your seeds are not until it's officially time to pot these guys up into their nursery pots or their larger size pots. These are not permanent. They're not meant to stay in these cells until they're planted outdoors. They're simply meant to stay in these cells until it's time to pot them up into a nursery pot or something a little bit larger and then placed into the garden, particularly with larger size seeds, such as your tomatoes or your peppers. Now, one thing to keep in mind is actually the positioning of the seeds. If you've ever seen a plant plant that is caught inside of the seed shell. It's actually the direction that you planted the seed in the soil. So what you can do is actually plant the seed uh, so that the opening is facing upwards. So on this seed, you can see kind of like a little nipple in there. You wanna make sure that this nipple is facing upwards so that the seed can just pop out or you want to place the seed on its side so that the shoot can go up and the root can go down without taking this seed with it. If you plant it, with the nipple down, what ends up happening is you have the seed shell come up and that can cause some issues when it comes to the baby seedlings in their performance. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the process of bumping up in this video, but if you wanna learn more about the process of bumping up, I suggest you hit that subscribe button. But in the meantime, if you want 25 tips on how to get your seed starting set up absolutely maximized with science, you wanna check out this video right here. And that video is what Google says you should watch. So I'll talk to you guys next time, bye.